I love he's that. our guy. Yeah, he's our guy. All right, let's bring him on here. Brycey. Bryce. Welcome to the show, fellas. Welcome to the show. Oh, listen, I love your setup. It looks great. I love the Masters. I Appreciate do have, before we start talking football, are you just a tad bit nervous for your Braves? They're, they're yeah, going into a buzzsaw a little bit. This. The Phillies scare me. That was like the one team that I didn't want to face. Did you guys see the clip of Bryson Stott? Oh, yeah. Grand Slam? If you didn't, you, you're okay, missing out on life. Have you seen the one where – Yes. Have you seen the one where they take the broadcast yes. out? Yes, that's the only clip just, there is. Oh, that is the clip. That's, that is just – look, it's going to be a great series. Um, if Max Freed is healthy, I feel really good. But I will say this. If the Phillies win one in Atlanta, I think they win the series. I, I don't they know. one of those first two. The way Philadelphia is right now – I don't know if anybody can go there and confidently think that they're going to win in Philadelphia right now. Especially just the way more, it's going, especially with yeah, the momentum. Especially more than one. Listen, and you got three or four guys on that team in Philly that, like, always play well in the postseason. Schwarber, like, you know Schwarber's going to do something crazy. You know, you know Harper's going to do something crazy. JT, Castellano. Like, you just have a lot of guys there that – now, look, I know the Braves are good. But, but, yeah. division – you know, the Phillies are, feel like they kind of like they let it down the world. It just they. Yeah. Well, and they did it last year, right? right. I mean, they I, I think this is going to be a situation for the Braves. If you can't win this series, the Phillies, can, it's kind of embarrassing because back to back years, you've been dominant in the regular season and you can't really even get past the Phillies. The Phillies are like, hey, we don't need the division title. We'll, we'll keep going to the NLS and NLCS and, and wherever they go. From I, there. Wish so, was, I wish yeah, it was seven games. Series. It's five. Right. I wish it was seven, but it was five. Oh. Which I think yeah. I think that's even scarier for the Braves. Yeah, it's it's because if I'm not mistaken, Nola and Wheeler are going to be pitching what games two and three or three and four potentially. I think it's two and three. I think two and three. Uh, so two like I said, off. If they, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So if they win one in Atlanta, like let's say the Braves win game one, Philly wins game two. I I don't have the confidence it comes back to Atlanta just because, and, and that's just partially that's just being a sports fan of the state of Georgia for so long. Um, yeah. But it is. But it's it's going to be it's going to be a fun series. I think the, this if, is the one that's like the biggest toss up. If that's the case, the Braves are going to be like the ninety Braves, nineteen ninety Braves. Tom Glavin. Like, hey, you're going to win the division yeah. all these years in a row, but you only get one championship. Yeah, that'd be tough. Yeah. But you know, there's also the aspect of where you could say, hey, Ronald Acuna MVP season didn't get to do a part of it in twenty one. Maybe maybe he goes on a tear here in the postseason to try to prove a point. You're right. Maybe so. You're right. He we'll talk. We'll, we'll, we'll keep. We'll talk. We'll keep having conversations about postseason baseball. <laughs> it starts on Saturday. I'm not going to be watching much postseason baseball on Saturday because it's college football season. Exactly. And uh, you know, there's a big game at 11 a.m. in Columbia. I don't know if you've heard about nervous it. Nervous Braves. Nervous Braves fan. First off, shout out. Absolutely. I just saw this. Nervous <laughs> Braves fan. Nervous LSU writer. <laughs> Love. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> I know a great uh, fan when I see one. I think we're nervous LSU fans too. I think right. So obviously, yeah, you know, yeah. last year was a. De- I mean, last week was a debacle. Like it was. There's no way around it. You give up 700 plus yards of offense. You give up 55 points. Your offense does this game. You lose the game, right? You hear from Brian Kelly all week. Hey, we're gonna work on tackling. We're gonna clean some things up. We're gonna hire an 82 year old defensive line coach to make sure everybody is in the right positions, which I feel like probably should have been done four <laughs> weeks ago, but it's done now, right? We have all these things that we need to do, but now you got to go and play an 11 a.m. game up in Columbia against Missouri, who's feeling themselves a little bit right now, and they have a really good offense. From you being around the locker room right now this week and having these conversations, you know, what is being said and talked about that maybe we don't really know on the outside? Obviously, you hear the answers, but what's deeper? Like, what, what are they doing to change up what they did defensively, and is there anything that they can do to change it up defensively? Because – Seems like the guys they have are the guys they have. Yeah, it's kind of like what Kelly said post game against Ole Miss. Nobody else is walking through that door, uh, and I think that can be kind of perceived two different ways. You know, if you're an LSU player, of uh, where hey, we've got to step it up, or you know, this is kind of all we've got. Now, the biggest news is obviously that Deuce Chestnut uh, is no longer is not with the team right now. What's the and deal with that? So we knew he didn't travel. Yeah. Well, okay. So I'll give you kind of my thought on it. This okay. is obviously this is not any. There's no there's no fact on it. So. When during fall camp, when the, the the scuffle, the fight happened, Denver Harris was obviously in that. But Deuce Chestnut is a guy that you know I, I love this about him. I heard you guys talking about him right before I hopped on. You need some dogs out there. Like Chestnut is that guy, undersized. He runs his mouth a lot. 
Um, and, and that's great. I think there's a little bit of a frustration aspect of him coming down, having success where he was last time at Syracuse. But this is big boy football, and it hasn't really translated for him. So I think it's a mental thing with him where, you know, whether it was frustrations, whether it's, um, you know, just a spat between he and players or coaches, I think Kelly's handling it the same way he did with Harris. and say, hey, take some time off because we can't have you – you know, if you're going to be on the field, you got to be completely bought in, yeah. which is a bold move. Because if I'm not mistaken, you only have four scholarship cornerbacks going on the road yeah. against Missouri. Like that's that's dangerous. That's a dangerous game to play. And yeah. obviously, some of those guys haven't played a lot of football. So, you know, that's something interesting. But kind of going along with that, you know, uh, the the higher I love how you just you, we didn't even refer to his name. We just said the 82 year old. But you know, the the yeah. higher. Uh, of they bring this guy in, but kind of we'll talk about it. He's said great. I love Pete. Thing. I love Pete. Yeah, he's Pete great. Jenkins. There you go. He's great. He, he's he's absolutely fantastic. No, you're right. But I think the question has to be is how much can it really really help you? You know what I mean? Like in the middle of a season, what what is the is he going to take you from to me what has been like a D defense or right. a, you know. F defense, whatever you want to say, to a to a B, an A. No, I don't think they have the capability on the roster to be able to do that. Now up front, yeah. uh, Makai Wingo talked about the the biggest thing that Jenkins has watched on film because he got there Tuesday, I believe. But he's obviously been watching LSU and and, and before that. That being said, is, is hand placement. He yeah. said the guys were were slow with their hands. They and essentially as a defensive lineman, you've got to be able to get your hands on an offensive line before he gets his hands on you. It's, you know, the quickness, the violence that you play with. And Wingo also talked about, you know, they haven't done a great job with being, I want to make sure I say this right, being disciplined with their eyes. Yeah. Uh, they've, they've allowed, whether it was K.J. Jefferson, you know, in, in running that option zone run, I think Missouri is going to try to implement a little bit of that in the sense I don't think Brady Cook is super mobile, but I do think that he is a guy that could pick you up five, six yards and keep you honest. Uh, that being said, I, I, we'll, we'll see what happens. I don't know, guys, the ceiling, though, of what this defense is. I, my feeling is the secondary is who they are. Yeah. Like that, That's not going to change. Nobody else is walking into that room. This front seven, like when you go back and you look at like our 24-7 recruiting rankings when they brought these guys in and the talent composite rating, the front seven's way too good to be playing like this. They're just not playing well. And so I think that's where Kelly was able to diagnose and say, look, we bring Jenkins in. We have to maximize our front seven mm -hmm. because our back the, the, the back end of the defense is who they are. And, and so we we can't we can't even rely on that really. And I, I agree with you. So you say how much can Pete Jenkins help, right? Obviously I don't think it's the magic pill for the whole defense. But if every level of defense is playing poorly, that makes for 730 yards of offense and the 55 points. Yeah. If your you're, they're most talented part of your defense is your front four, and you can fix hand placement, fix eyes, that has nothing to do with physical ability or talent at all, I think that he can maybe unlock something with these guys where, okay, at least our defensive line is really good. And so if they're really good, that's mm -hmm. going to make our defense better as a whole because now we yeah. can do something, maybe get some pressure on it. And the defense, honestly, as good as the offense has been, doesn't have to be elite. It only needs to be average no. at best to be able to compete in every game that they play in. So to answer that, I think that's maybe the ceiling of like, hey, if you can get to the defensive line to play up to their potential, I think that um, they, can be, they can be a good defense. Now, before I uh, – before, Jared has a question. Before he asks you this question, I want to follow up on what you said about you only have four scholarship guys uh, in the secondary or cornerbacks in the sec to, to, uh, traveling on this trip. With that, you know, we haven't seen a lot of Toviano. We haven't seen a lot of these younger guys out there playing meaningful snaps. Does that mean maybe you're going to start seeing some of these high-level guys come in and, and get some opportunity in this game? I mean, I think so. I mean, we obviously mentioned Chestnut not going to be making this trip. So you have Denver Harris, Zion Alexander, Ashton Stamps, and Terrence Welch. Those are your guys. Welch got a little bit of a run. Um, and I don't say a little bit. I mean, he, he got a lot of run uh, against Ole Miss. He flashed some, and then there were some just head scratching plays where you're just like, my, I, it's just, it is crazy. That being said, I think Toviano is the guy that's got to be primed for it, right? I mean, look, this is a guy that Toviano was working in the summer and the fall as a nickel guy. Like, that's what he was working at in the nickel package. I mean, what do you have to lose? Like, I, that's my, that's my thought process. Like, you, what do you have to lose in the sense of these, these guys not being really able to perform at a high level? And if this game turns into where you get down a score, a score and a half, you know, uh, 10, 14 points, 
throw them out there because nothing up until this point, and it's five weeks into the season, we're going into week six, has really paid off yet. So I, I, I'm with you. I think that Tobiano's a guy. I really want to see Ryan Yates. You know, if it can he play the nickel position as well and help that out? Uh, you know, what does he look like as a safety? You know, I've got my own thoughts on the safety room. Let's hear um, him. Let's hear him. You know, Major Keep Burns. Ma- ma- so this this is where I sit. LSU loves Major Burns, and, and they should. He He's passionate. He's fiery. He loves this university. Um, you know, Baton Rouge, born and, I mean, born and bred, just he loves this place. That being said, the, the play just hasn't been there. And, and we're, and you look, you can separate the two. I mean, you can separate, hey, this is a guy that could be a fan favorite, but he's just not living up to what he is. I, I think that this is a guy that loves physical play. Like, I think the Army game is going to be his favorite game of, of the year <laughs> because they're not going to throw the ball. And, you know, they, they're, they're, he's going to be able to play essentially inside the box. That's something to note as well. I'm not saying this is going to happen. During fall camp, they ran a lot of him as like a rover linebacker position uh, when they had Perkins in the in the middle. Um, I don't know if it's a Perkins-esque position of where he's just kind of lining up over, all over, but we've seen him be effective when he's been brought on the blitz. W- would they even entertain that? You know, because the coverage-wise, if you look at like different grading systems, Pro Football Focus has a great one. He and Andre Sam have not really graded out well. So all of this to say, I think – and I'll end it with this, and then I'll throw it back to you guys. Kelly talked about this this week. Obviously, it's so much bigger than football. It really, really is. But not having Greg Brooks back there really yeah. hurts. Yeah. From a leadership perspective, from a guy that can get you on track, a guy that understands what Brian Kelly wants to be as an LSU Tiger, not having him back there. Now, obviously, you got a guy that's you know fighting for his life, and, yeah. and none of what we're saying right now matters about that. But I think if you separate it, uh, which is okay to do. You say it's bigger than way bigger than football, but if we're just speaking specifically on football, uh, it, it it hurts not having it back there. Couldn't agree anymore, um, Bryce. Like I'm, I'm glad you talked about seemingly everything you've thrown out there through five. Nothing's really stuck yet so far. I know our feeling feelings on this right now in the building. We just talked about it a little bit, but outside of coach speak and just being sheer honest about this week. How big is this game for LSU? Well, I mean, if you talk, if we take a you know, first stab at it, the SEC West, like if you want to try to make it to Atlanta, you have you got to win out. Like I don't see a scenario where you can drop another conference game and get there. A lot is going to be depending on what Alabama and A&M do uh, this weekend. Ole Miss obviously still, you know, uh, laying in the weeds. But LSU, to me, is kind of that fourth team right now in the SEC West that's, you know, fighting for their – for their postseason lives when you get to the, the SEC title. It's a big game for them. But I also think in the grand scheme of things, because I'll be honest with you, with the way this defense is played, it puts an immense amount of pressure on this offense, and we've already seen them cave once to an offense that's really, really good. There, You, you could look at this, and people might look at this, there very well may could be two more losses on the schedule. Like, there really could be. You still got to play Alabama. You still got to play Texas A&M, which who knows what that Aggie team is going to be when they come into Baton Rouge at the end of the season. Uh, that being said, I think it's a big thing for confidence. I think that, you know, this game, you, ha- you, got, you have to leave. Like you guys mentioned, if this defense can just play average, this is a, this is a potential playoff team. Like, that's how good this offense is. So – I'm not talking about playoffs, but I'm just talking about like week to week, it's a survive and advance. You mm-hmm. know, Auburn comes in here next weekend. That's going to be, I don't care if Auburn was 0 and 6. Yeah. That game's always crazy. Like it's it's a it's a weird, wacky game. Auburn plays with voodoo, like it's just weird. Um, that being said, I, I think it's huge for confidence. Like I think that you have to find a way to go on the road and win and contain a good offense. Look, Brady. Uh, Brady Cook's thrown, what, 11 touchdowns, no interceptions, yep. 75% completion percentage. Luther Burden is a day one pick. Yeah. I think you have like three of the top five receivers uh, in the country playing in this game right here. And so it's going to be – I think it's going to be a lot of offense. But, but Jared, I, I think this game's really, really important because if you lose this one, you really start to wonder yeah. the wheels about the locker off. room. Right. Yeah, you, you really start to wonder about the buy-in of some of the older guys that are like, you know what? You see it across the country. If we lose two more, we got like five losses. What, what, what's the, what's the point? And and I'm not saying that I'm not speaking to the character of any specific players, but it happens. You have guys inside that locker room, and we already know that some of these transfer portal guys they brought in, um, 
we're not perfect fits for the culture. I think that we can say that about Denver Harris. He's still growing and learning what that means. And I think we can also say that about a guy like Deuce Chestnut, that you don't get, you know, uh, a coach's scratch or a coach's decision not to travel when your secondary is this bad, right. if something's not going and, on. And, so and that, that's, mentioned... that, that's something for me. It's really important. And you, Yeah, and you mentioned this game and how it's huge, but – like you said, you lose this one and the questions start to come in and you also still got Alabama on the schedule. You also still got A&M on the schedule. Florida. You also talk about how wacky the Auburn game always gets. You got Florida still on the schedule. You just don't know where things can go awry from here if you lose this game. Yeah. Well, and you mentioned yeah, – no, no, it's – Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I mean, I'm with you on this whole thing because – what my first initial reaction to the Deuce Chestnut news, obviously health, like healthy scratch didn't travel, was I immediately went to the locker room. I was like, if you have a team that's entirely bought in, you don't have a situation like this where it occurs, right? Like they're faced with a little adversity, yeah. and now you have people that are already opting out of the season, essentially. And if from LSU's perspective, you can feel it in Baton Rouge as this thing's a pressure cooker already. If they drop a game at 11 a.m. Yeah. to Missouri, which shouldn't even be a thought just from a 1,000-foot view of what this team could be, you're going to start to see the worst thing that can happen at LSU with, like, with LSU football, and that becomes ambivalence, where nobody goes to the games, and you have three of your last five are going to be at home, and they'll get the, like, the seniors won't get the experience of an LSU football season. And I say that to say you can't fake desperate. If LSU has that same feeling within the building, this is the game to turn it on and be like, okay, you can save your season, and you're playing for your season every single game. Yeah, I'll add this too because we've had a lot of conversation. We joked about it last week about on the message boards, and they were a lot of fun this week to be a part of. Oh yeah. Um, I think I think this is something too. A lot of people have been in you know DM'd me about this and all this kind of stuff. Well, this is what you get when you use the transfer portal. If that was true, Logan Diggs wouldn't be who he is. You know what I mean? You can't you can't Mikhail just Wingo. because it's so bad. Look, it it is bad. But Kai Wingo, exactly. It's. It's not, this is not a product of the transfer portal. This is a product of, I still believe, and maybe it's a cop out of what happened at the end of 2021 when yeah. you had what, 34, 36, 100%. 38 scholarship players in the roster. Like I said before the season, my preseason prediction was 10 and 2 with losses to Florida State and Alabama. And the reason I thought that was, you know, as an outsider, not really, yeah. you know, it has no purple and gold glasses whatsoever. I, I sat there and said, look, this is, they, they did overachieve last year. Yeah. And, and and that's cool. That's fine. It was a lot of fun, obviously, to watch. But they still have a long way to go. And Brian Kelly sat at the um, – which was the last media appearance before fall camp started. I think it was like the Rotary Club of Baton Rouge or whatever. And he said, verbatim, we're still a year away. And all of us in the media were like, yeah, 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 but look at X, Y, Z of what you have. And look, Kelly's been right. And I think he knew this. And I think it's um, that's why he's kind of been a little bit uh, – he hasn't been rude by any means. Ordering. But he's been like hilarious about the fact that we uh, – yeah, yeah, because he knows it's y'all that, that, that propped us up. We knew inside the building what we were. And, you know, he's not going to come out and say that they're terrible. He shouldn't. Head coach should never do that. But defensively, they're terrible. And, and, and I think they knew that it was going to be a challenge – uh, no matter what. So I just encourage, like, from the fans that sit there and say, well, it's the transfer portal's fault. Okay, well, right. Logan Diggs is one of the best kids you're going to meet. Yeah. Greg Brooks last year, one of the best kids you're going to meet. Makai Wingo. It, you got your You have to vet this stuff. Portal. And sometimes, yeah, you, the only reason you're afloat this season and a guy that if you had one loss is probably in the Heisman conversation in Jaden Daniels, yep. I, you know, it, it, you, they just missed, and we can say that. They missed on this secondary. It was a big question coming in, and I think it's a little bit worse than we all thought it would be. Well, and look, I think they're talking about the transfer portal because the guys that are struggling the most are the cornerbacks that we got out of the portal, right? And I think – like, I don't think the transfer portal is the reason why we're here. I also do believe yeah. – where the other point of that is, like, hey, if you want to grow a team and you want the team to be – sustain, like the, the, the success to be sustainable – you have got to go get secondary players recruiting as freshmen and develop them as you go up and you sprinkle some transfer portal on top. And Brian Kelly said that much, right? But the reality of it is after 2021, you didn't have that luxury. You had to go out there and you had to fill mm -hmm. a competitive roster because you don't have time just to, hey, we need three years to build it back up. And so, you know, I think yeah. both are right, but I'm with you. It's not the transfer transfers portal's fault that LSU is struggling the way that it's struggling. Um, yeah, and I'll add into that real quick. The recruiting, the recruiting cycle that you've seen over the past couple of years, they haven't really hit on some of these guys necessarily. I think that were early impact guys, you know. But we also have to understand 
I know LSU plays a lot of these teams. It's really rare for a true freshman to come in at this level in the yeah. SEC and yeah. ball out. It happens, and LSU has a lot of teams on their schedule that have, have that opportunity, have guys like that. LSU just hasn't found that over the past couple of years. You found it with Harold Perkins. You might have found it with Witt Weeks, but not here. So you mentioned Witt, and you mentioned the cornerbacks. You mentioned only four. So last week – you had st- different starters on the, in, uh, on the cornerback position. You had Terrence Welch started, right? It was his first start. Mm-hmm. And you also had Ashley Stamps. Stamps start, right? Both of them first career starts. Do you see that happening again this week, or do you see it going back to Zy Alexander and Denver Harris? I mean, I think all four are going to play. <laughs> right. I mean, I think that's such a tough question because I think look, Welch, in all fairness, Welch did show some things in coverage. That makes you feel like, okay, you know, he's getting his shot. He's he's playing a little bit. But then I know you guys were talking about earlier, like the inability to tackle. Yeah. So it's just I don't think any of these four guys have shown that they can consistently tackle. And if you're going to play zone, you have to be able to tackle. I mean, you 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 can't you can't you either have to play man or you have to, you know or or you have to just be able to tackle and, and they haven't been able to do that and they don't play man a lot. So that being said, I, I could see Harris getting a start because once again, the thing about Denver Harris is he has that killer instinct. He has that mentality of he's just going to go, and he doesn't really care what you think or, or anything about it. I mean, he he's going to trash talk. He's going to you know do the seatbelt you know thing, whether it's thrown 15 yards out of bounds or not. I, I just think at some point back there, you're going to have to find some guys that just don't care and just play like their hair's on fire. I think Harris fits the mold out of these guys like that. I'd like to see Welch, you know, see what he could do. Zy Alexander has all the, you know, the, the measurables of what you want, but it just hasn't been out there consistently. I can see it be a Denver and Zy game. I, I do wonder what Ashton Stamps could fit in because this is a guy that he's just a, he's a freak athlete. He was really, really good in fall camp at reacting, but you got to have guys that are willing to enforce their will. If, if he's shown that in practice, I would give him the nod in Stamps. I, I wouldn't mind seeing Stamps and Harris start this game, just personally for me. I, I think that Welch and Zai, you've seen a lot of. Those all four are going to have to play. Uh, but to kind of start to set a tone, you know, Stamps, a guy that was a little under-recruited in Denver, a guy that always feels like he has something to prove, I, I'd rather have that on the back end than, you know, uh, maybe passive play, which to me has been the story so far this season, just passive play back there. Hey, this could be a very unfortunate situation for the person that I'm bringing up, <laughs> but missing one game, being doubtful in this game, the way the season has gone and the way the play has gone so far on that side of the ball, if this were to go and be a decent and or better performance for the defense and say this person does miss the game, do you think we've seen the last of spades, like making a, like a, a sizable a contribution, yeah. if you will? I mean, you still get to play Army and Georgia State, so not the last of them in an LSU <laughs> uniform. But but I but I will say this: number forty should not come off the field, yeah. like in in any sense of any imagination, unless he is begging to be taken out. I mean, he's get the helmets off and he's gasping for air because he's played like forty straight plays. He just shouldn't come off the field. Uh, you know, you guys mentioned form tackler, a guy that you know plays with kind of a reckless abandonment. I, that's him. If Omar dogs. is hurt, yeah, you, yeah, you, you just you, you can't. I mean, if if Omar's truly hurt and doesn't play in this game, I know we talked about it. You know, he kind of got Wally pipped in that Mississippi State game potentially. I don't see. You know, Kelly used the term when we asked him post game. I believe it was you know uh, Glenn West, one of the guys I work with, who said he said you know what's the rotation look like? He goes, we want to keep him fresh. You can't keep him fresh at the expense of your defense getting blown up for 700 yards exactly. like that. You you can't do that, and you can't coach like that. And so, fresh and I think that space is going to be utilized. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You can utilize him in certain packages. Uh, you can utilize him as a substitute. But to me, there is nothing that this defense has proven, and that Whitweeks has not proven that he should be off the field. That that, that I think that when you look at those two things, number 40 has got to be a part of what you're doing. You mentioned a little bit, of, obviously, but trying to keep the defense fresh. I, I don't think uh, running 90 plays on defense really fits that bill. But when you look at the LSU offense, is there a way that, that maybe you see them try to do it on that side of the ball where they try to, try to control the game from a run, run game perspective with Jane Daniels' legs, using Logan Diggs more, try to get back to maybe what they did against Florida State just to try to own the clock 
as opposed to getting to a scoring bout, like a scoring bout every game. I don't think it's a good idea. I'm just trying to find a way to get the defense off the field. Yeah, I mean, it, it's on paper. It's not a bad idea. The problem I have with it is this offense is playing so well. Yeah. I don't want to touch anything that could mess right. it up. That that's you know if they're if they're going to score three plays seventy five yards, I'd rather have three plays seventy five yard scoring drive than a twelve play you know drive with no points. And so I don't want I don't want to mess with anything because I think if you start to tinker with that, that's like when we talked about all the wheels could fall off mm-hmm. because now offensively you're not able to do anything and really there's no hope because you're not stopping anybody and you're not able to really enforce your will offensively and be explosive like you have been this season. Uh, so I mean I do understand I understand that sentiment. We've had some people on our you know board bring that up. Look, you could you, you could probably alter a couple of things. I mean, Logan Diggs has shown the ability to fight for tough yards, to be able to be a grinder. Uh, you could probably run some more zone option, you know, with Daniels. But I think what makes this team, dip, you know, difficult is the fact that, like we talked about, three of the top five receivers I feel like in the country are playing in this game, and two of them are going to be wearing, you know, white and gold. So, you know, that that being said, you can't you want to utilize him. You want to util- utilize Mason Taylor. I don't think you can take your foot off the gas as an offense, and that is the sad situation yeah. that I think LSU is in in the sense of it, it would make sense. Like, let's just line it up. Let's run some 12 personnel. Let's just run it down their throat and have a seven, eight-minute drive. But is that the best thing for this offense? Is it how it's built? I don't think so. People would lose their goddamn minds if Jaden Daniels went back to, like, throwing it short and no, not no, taking no, 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 no. deep yeah, shots. Let's not even put that out in the universe. Like, <laughs> let's not even do yeah, it. Yeah, no, I, I can't take it. I I can't take it. Get Just clip this part out, please. Yeah. Yeah. Get yeah. off the internet. <laughs> that was never was never was said. Bryce, Dark space. Always, <laughs> oh, we always appreciate you. Love having you on the show. Last week we talked, or two weeks ago we talked. No, actually it was last week. We talked about hey, what was the prediction? I don't think anybody could have expected fifty-five forty-nine. Um, this <laughs> this week, both offenses are very good. Both secondaries kind of struggle. Uh, I think the over under is sixty-four and a half. I think the over is a good bet. Uh, Lions five and a half. What do you like? Give me your score prediction. Well, I don't know if anyone should trust me because I took the under last week. Oh, so um, wow. Yeah, so I don't. Apparently, I'll cut that, I'll maybe they'll fade you. I'll maybe cut that part too. Yeah, just yeah. Maybe they'll yeah, maybe, yeah. That's what you should do. Just fade whatever <laughs> I'm saying. Um, I do think the over hits. Uh, I will say that. I, I think this is a game where look, Missouri's talented. They've uh, you know they've got a guy in defense coordinator Brian Baker that's been really really good for them. LSU guy. The problem I went Baton Rouge guy. Yeah, LSU guy. Um, you know you know he's going to be fired up to kind of stick it to uh, you know a team that uh, in LSU that he wasn't able to stay at and stuff like that. So I think all together in this, the difference is is when you look at the games that Missouri's won, they've won a lot of close games. Last weekend against Vanderbilt, the score was really not indicative of how close that game was. And I would know. I took Missouri 13 and a half, um, and they they covered in the last second. So I will say this. Great teams cover. Missouri's covered for me the past two weeks. That's kind of the scary part in this. Um, so I will say that much. They've covered the past two weeks at 13 and a half point spreads as, as, uh, as favorites. I, I don't know if Missouri's offense – can really keep up with LSU's offense. I don't think LSU wins this game because of their defense, because you're going to have to force some turnovers. They really haven't done that. Um, But I do think that the pressure of Missouri's offense, they they haven't felt anything like this. You know, they beat Kansas State. That was a really tough physical football game. They beat Memphis in a weird game. Uh, I think that game was in St. Louis. They, they, They beat them there. They beat Vanderbilt, but to really get out into a you know track meet against a team is a lot to ask of an offense that hasn't really done it. Look, maybe they do. I mean, maybe they show up and they say, you know what, like we we're ready to do this and we're going to make some plays. I do think LSU wins this game. I think I had the final score: LSU forty-five, uh, Missouri thirty-eight. I think it's I think it's a touchdown game. Okay. But I just I think that Missouri blinks. I have more faith in LSU's offense than I do Missouri's. Perfect. Offense. That's perfect. I think they're very very good. I think they're very good, but I just yeah. think they blink before LSU does. Perfect. That's the over and the five and a half. That's all I need to hear. That'd be good. a good start of my Saturday. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. But so, f- so fade that. Yeah, fade I'm, that. I'm going to no, go the opposite okay. direction. Watching? I'm definitely the taking under. the over. Maybe I, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do. So Missouri in the under. <laughs> I'm not, I, don't, I, haven't, I haven't been winning much either, so it's fine. It's whatever. Hey, you won with Missouri. That's it. That's it. Bryce, dude, I appreciate you. Well, we'll talk to you again next week. Obviously, you got a big one at home next week. Hopefully, it's bigger. Because of this game, so uh, yeah. you know, we'll all be watching. Have a most, have a bloody mary, whatever you need to to He's get working. you going.
It makes you work better. Long. I'm not going to the game. Oh, I'm not nice. going to the game. That's what I'm, I mean. I'm, yeah, man. I'm, I'm sitting on the couch. Look, I'll say this. After I almost got trampled last weekend on the field at Ole Miss <laughs> with them, I mean, that was nuts and trash thrown on me. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to go to Como. I'm just going to stay at home because yeah. the Braves play that night. So yeah. we're going to watch that. Look, you have a, oh, we know what you're doing you're now. Yeah, I see what you're doing. <laughs> you're going to have a day. You're going to have a day. Uh, dude, we appreciate you. Enjoy the rest of your Friday. Enjoy the weekend. Uh, and we'll talk to you next week. Sounds good, guys. Thanks for having me. See you later.